Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning. A special welcome to our guests, our visitors. We praise your time here is a blessing for you this morning. Uh, this morning, uh, we'll have the pleasure of uh, uh, bringing in a, a new member into our church family this morning. Uh, Michelle Bornpol uh, uh, will be here, and we'll be welcoming her into membership this morning. So uh, we've got some, that going on this morning, as well as the Lord's Supper. Uh, so God's, God's going to richly bless us today. Uh, we thank him for the rain that we've received. Uh, don't know how much rain we got. How much rain did some of you guys get this morning? 75. 75, okay. 85. Okay. One inch? Anybody got an inch? Okay. One person says he's, just, he's going to say it's an inch. Okay. I better quit before I sound like an auctioneer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, our order service this morning is Divine Service 3 on page 184 this morning. And our opening hymn is hymn number 566, By Grace I'm Saved. Uh, again, welcome to each and every one of you. Let's go ahead and begin with our opening hymn. Thank you. 
I'd like to invite you to please stand as you're able. Uh, we begin with the invocation on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I shall confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter suffering death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. Again, the intro is uh, printed on the insert in our bulletins this morning. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue and bring to completion every good intent that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament lesson for this 14th Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that, will be your, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who when they hear of all these statutes will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? whenever we call upon him. And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson this morning comes to us from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the, the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints." And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand for the ring of the Holy Gospel and let us sing the Alleluia in verse on page 190. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Mark, the 7th chapter. Glory be to thee, o Lord. And Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. 
And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee. We now make confession of our Christian faith, the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we uh, sing the hymn of the day, hymn number 664, Fight the Good Fight.
Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, um, I'd like to ask you a question. This is kind of a poll this morning. And it's one of those polls that I'm going to ask you not just to simply raise your hand, but to actually stand up as you're able to uh, if you agree with the statement. Okay? Are you ready? The first statement is this, is that I am a sinner. Okay. Now, I'm not just talking about me. Okay. <laughs> uh, second question is this. Now, you sit down if you don't agree with the statement that I am a saint, I am holy, I am perfect. People sitting down. Most of you say, yeah, that's great, that's great. Oh, we are saints, we are holy, right? Okay, well, go ahead and have a seat now. I see some people say, uh, 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 dear, uh, uh, am I a sinner or a saint? And she says, you're a sinner, sit down, right? <laughs> you know, many times we might be uncomfortable with the idea of saying that we are a saint, that we are holy. And that, I think the distinction comes in this, is that, you know, we know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And so we are very comfortable coming and asking for forgiveness uh, each Sunday, and we know that Christ forgives us. But I think it's a harder thing uh, when, we, when we think about what, had, what has Christ done to me. And what I mean by that is what Christ has done to me in baptism. You see, Jesus doesn't just forgive us, does he? He doesn't just come and give us eternal life, but rather he comes to make us new. And in holy baptism, we are made new, right? We have been uh, made new in the image of, of God, in the image of Christ. Uh, St. Paul tells us this in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse uh, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And Luther reflects this in the uh, catechism under the fourth part of baptism, right? Uh, that each day by daily contrition and repentance, we, we drown the old sinful flesh. So that the new person, the, the new person that you have been created to be, may rise and live before God in righteousness and purity forever. The question is, do we truly believe that? That might be a harder thing to do. St. Paul, when he's writing his letter to the Ephesians, opens up with this phrase. He says, to the saints who are in Ephesus. Now, another uh, translation of the word saint, saint simply means holy one. So when you use as the plural, it's uh, the saints who are in Ephesus, the Ephesus, or the holy ones who are in Ephesus. Notice that Paul doesn't say to the sinners who are in Ephesus, right? He doesn't say that. But he's calling them to mind who they are in Jesus Christ. And so he says to the holy ones, to the saints in Ephesus, if Paul was writing to the congregation here, he would say to the holy ones here at St. John Lutheran Church. Right? We have been called to be holy. And, and this is our new identity in Christ. Uh, Paul emphasizes this a few verses later in chapter 1. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Again, uh, Paul is reminding them of that new life that God has given to each of us, to be blameless and holy, not based on what we do, but based on what God has made us and created us to be in holy baptism. Now, you might be thinking, well, pastor, I still struggle with that flesh, right? And, and, and that the good Lutheran doctrine is this, is that we are 
a hundred percent sinner and a hundred percent saint all at the same time and we struggle with the flesh and, and we and I understand that but that is not who you truly are in Christ that sinful flesh will eventually die and go into the ground but who you've been made to be in baptism never dies in fact we continue to live even though the body goes in the ground to wait that day when Christ raises us to be holy to be perfect in all aspects of our lives but he's already giving you the down payment on that there's a lady one time who uh, was baptized four times four times now you might be thinking why would she be baptized four times? Well, she was a member of uh, the Four Square Gospel Church. Okay? And Four Square Gospel Church is kind of one of the more charismatic churches uh, in the country. And her belief system was this. If I truly believe in Jesus, then my will will be perfect. And I will not want to sin. So she makes this commitment to Jesus. So again, she's taking baptism and makes it, making it her work. And she's saying, I, I'm committing myself to Jesus. And she truly believes this. Okay? She's very fervent. But then sometime later, she stumbles and falls as she struggles with the flesh. So she thinks, that baptism must not have took. So she is baptized again. And then she sins again. And she's baptized again. And she sins again and finally she's baptized again. But what she's ultimately doing is denying Christ and what Christ has done for her in baptism. She's denying that God has made her new. Even though she's still struggling with the flesh, God has made her new. And it's his work in her life, not her work, but his work uh, that will prevail uh, to the end. Right? Well, in our epistle lesson this morning, St. Paul says this. He tells us to put on the whole armor of God. And, and why is this? Well, so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Now, as we live in this world, we see a lot of crazy things happening. Uh, we see uh, just over in the Middle East and the debacle that had, has taken place there, the rise of the Taliban and ISIS again. And, and it's easy to see those are our enemies, right? It's easy to see that those over in China are our enemies or uh, communist uh, Russia during the Cold War, but those aren't really our enemies. Paul says this, is that our enemies are the devil. He says, uh, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Our battle is not with flesh and blood people in this world. Now, some of them might be under his control. They might be following his lead, but they are not our enemies. The devil is. But there is one flesh that is our enemy, and that is our own. As we struggle with that sinful flesh, and we struggle to drown it each day in holy baptism. Now, it's easy to think that this is my job to do, this is my work that I do, but it's really God's work in all of this. Uh, St. Paul says, take up the whole armor of God, uh, that you may be able to stand against, uh, sorry, stand with, let me start that over. Take, uh, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have done all to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish the, all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take up the helmet of salvation, the sword, the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with prayer and supplication. Now, who is providing the armaments here? It's God, right? 
Each piece of this armament is tied to the word of God. Whether it's the helmet of salvation, right? Uh, the, the, uh, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, uh, the, the sandals that were the readiness of the gospel, it all points us to the word of God, but ultimately even to the visible word of holy baptism. It's God's work. God is the one through his word, through his sacrament, who equips you. And this equipping is, in essence, this new life that we've been given. And God equips you uh, with his armaments in which he defends you. And he gives you the sword of the spirit by which the enemy is slain. And we know that we can call upon him also in prayer because we are not alone in this battle. But Christ is ever present there with us. Now, the danger of all this, of living in this world, isn't what God is doing, but it's what we would do. It's easy to set aside the, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, all these armaments, the sword of spirit, everything that's tied to that word of God, it's easy to just set that aside and simply think, I don't need that. And to simply go through life without that armament, without that protection. Now, how many veterans are out there this morning? Okay, a few veterans. Let me ask you guys this. If a soldier left uh, the army to go off on some tangent and what, didn't stay by his troops or anything, what, in the heat of battle, what's going to happen to that soldier? What most likely would happen? Anybody want to mention that? Yes, Ron? Okay, well, yeah, he maybe get arrested when he gets back, or they catch up to him. But what, what happens with the enemy, though? Could they be killed? Absolutely. Could they be captured? Yeah. Now, what does the enemy do when he captures the soldier? He's probably going to torture him, because he wants intel. He wants to torture him so that they could get intel on the other troops. But eventually what the enemy wants to do is turn that soldier to their side and send them back as a traitor. Isn't this what happens when we leave the church? Isn't this what happens when Satan works on those, when we say, I don't need God's word, I don't need his sacraments, I don't need to be here, uh, I can do life on my own? And what happens? Satan comes and he warps things, doesn't he? He gets us to live according to our sinful flesh. And like our Savior said this morning, uh, out of the heart comes all these evil things, lusts, desires, and, and all these uh, I, thoughts of murder and everything all come from within the heart. Now our society says, oh, that's just normal you know, uh, you can, in fact, it promotes those kinds of things. You know, our society promotes murder in a number of capacities, whether it's euthanasia, abortion, assisted suicide. And, and it works us to think that that is how it is. And Satan also wants us to think that uh, when it comes to his word, that his word isn't really true, that uh, God didn't create the world in six days. That Death is natural. And of course, if death is natural, then what do we need a Savior for? Because we confess that Jesus gives us eternal life. You see, Satan is always at work to twisting our minds so that we sub succumb to him, so that we are, uh, leave what the world teaches us rather than what God teaches us. And, it teaches, and the world and Satan are always trying to draw us away from Christ. But Christ comes to you and he says, I have made you new. You are my holy child. The question I've been asking this morning is, do you truly believe that? Do you hold on to what Christ not only has done for you at the cross, but what he has also done to you in your baptism? that he has made you his holy and beloved child. 
And, and they might be thinking, yes, Pastor, but I struggle each week. I stumble and fall, and, and that that's happens. You know, in the midst of the battle, injuries do happen, right? I don't know a soldier out there that doesn't come back wounded in some fashion from a battle. But at the same time, we come back here to God's house, and through His Word, through His, his body and blood He gives us in Lord's Supper, He heals our wounds. He strengthens us. He nourishes us for the battles that will take place in the next week. Because as long as we live in this world, there will be those battles. But the, but the good news is this, is that Christ has already won those battles. Because Christ has won the war. And he calls on you to live in that victory already that he has won for you. That he has taken you from the realm of darkness and into light. That you may no longer see yourselves as sinners but holy and beloved children of God. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I invite you to please stand as we sing the offertory and as we bring our offerings forward. I invite you to please be seated. I'd like to invite uh, Billy and Michelle Bornpaul to please come uh, join me up here. Beloved of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before, before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you on this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil and all of his works and all of his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of or sorry, do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold that all the prophetic and absolute scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God in faith, word, and deed, and to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? And do you desire to become a communion member of this congregation? 
Will you support the work of our gracious Lord that he has given to us in this congregation with your prayers and gifts that God has given you? Upon this your confession of faith, I acknowledge you publicly that you are a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. I invite you to receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that the Lord has given to his church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like the congregation to please stand for prayer and let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing uh, this, uh, these your sons and daughters to acknowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your Spirit, the Word and Spirit, that they may continue steadfast in the one true faith and the fellowship of this congregation as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Welcome. You may return to your seats. We continue with the, uh, with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we ask you to be near us with your word and spirit. Guide and lead us that we may not stray from the way of your commandments, nor forget the wonderful blessings that you have given to us. Direct us always with your word of truth. Lord, in your mercy, by your Holy Spirit, protect us this day from the assaults of the devil. Equip us with the full armor of God that we may be clothed in truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation, bearing the sword of the Spirit, which is your word. Keep us all in safety and security from the forces of the evil one. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, preserve us from all that would defile us in heart and soul. Keep us from all evil thoughts, immor immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. Create in us a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us, that we would be holy as you are holy. Lord, in your mercy, God of all knowledge and wisdom, grant us to know your, you and your love. Bless pastors and teachers, parents and grandparents, and all who teach the faith, that the gospel may continue to spread throughout all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father and giver of life, we pray for all pregnant mothers and the babies they are carrying in the womb, especially those with high-risk pregnancies. We pray that you would keep them healthy and free from complications and bring both mother and child safely to the day of birth. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are the strength of the weak and the refuge of the powerless. Be with your people who are struggling with doubt and temptation. Grant assurance to the doubtful and deliverance to those tempted by this world. Give your power, grace, and love to those who need it. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of armies, we pray for our, our soldiers, fellow citizens, and refugees in Afghanistan. We pray that they may be kept uh, safe against the evil forces of ISIS and the Taliban, and that they may be able to successfully leave the country. We also pray, Lord, for those Americans who are missing, that they may be brought home. And we pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones in the bombing this week, that you may bring them your comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the Church, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world, but especially in Af Afghanistan, who are now living in the fear of, for their lives. We pray for your protection, and if it be your will, Lord, that you would raise up the international community, uh, that, they may, uh, uh, that they would uh, rise up to protect your people. Be with uh, women and young girls who are often sold into slavery, that they may be found and set free, or kept safe from those that would do them harm. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh Lord, we pray for the Lutheran Hour Ministry in Ethiopia, with, which certainly 
which recently lost educational materials and office equipment like computers and pr printers in the recent flooding. Thank you for keeping them all safe uh, uh, during the floods, but we also pray for funds that they would be supplied for all their needs. And we pray, Lord, for housing for the missionaries that are there. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, bring health and healing to your people. We pray for everyone in need of your mercy today, including Laura Hyden, Marlis McPherson, Michael Beathy, Lenny Paracini, uh, Declan Heineman, uh, Dwayne Sugden, Hunter Houghton, Leroy Beathy, Bonnie Smith, Lois Ann Bartles, Bruce Houghton, Kevin Miesbach, Brianna Potsberg, Karen McCoy, Arlo Miesbach, Ellen DeYoung, and Josh Wilkins. Strengthen them with your word of grace that they would look to you for comfort in the midst of suffering and pain. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord of life, we give you thanks for thanks that on the cross you paid the price for sin and through your glorious resurrection you have conquered death itself. Comfort all those whose loved ones have died, especially the family of TJ and Elizabeth Kimball with a certain knowledge, hope, and joy that the death of a Christian is nothing more than a mere sleep as they wait in heaven with you for the day when you shall waken them in the great resurrection on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, purify our hearts with your cleansing word. Remove all impurities from us and enable us to lead godly lives before you. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to shed his blood on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Bless us this day as we remember that same body and blood in the Holy Sacrament, remembering and proclaiming with joy the salvation accomplished for us by his death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue page 194 with the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we long and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to him, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
I invite, I invite you to please stand as you're able as we sing the Nook Dominitus on page 199. Lord, now lest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared Give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for His sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his counts upon you and grant to you his peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated for our closing hymn this morning, hymn number 662, Onward Christian Soldiers.
Again, welcome to each and every one of you. Welcome to all of our guests and our visitors. We praise your time here as a blessing to you this morning. And especially uh, a special welcome to uh, uh, Billy and Michelle for, uh, as he probably become part of our family of faith here. Uh, Billy has always been on the rolls, but we're welcoming Michelle in this morning. So uh, God's blessings to you both. Um, there's a few announcements this morning. Uh, uh, St. Peter's Youth Group is having an outdoor concert uh, it, uh, with the Daniel Christian Band. Uh, that's going to be on Sunday, uh, September the 19th at 6.30. It's been in the bulletin for a while, but it's going to be about three weeks from today. So uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, gentlemen, uh, tomorrow evening uh, is Lloyd Beathy's, at Lloyd Beathy's Place is the LL uh, Annual Broad Feed. Uh, so that's usually good food and good drink and good company. So uh, I'd like to invite you there uh, for that. That's going to take place uh, starting around 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Also, uh, parents and kids, uh, Sunday school uh, will be starting soon. We're going to have rally day in a couple weeks. That's going to take place at Emmanuel during our, uh, right after our joint worship service. Uh, and classes will begin on September 19th. Uh, we'll be uh, using the curriculum this year uh, with answers in Genesis. Uh, so it will be a way of uh, not only teaching the biblical faith, but uh, getting the tools needed to give an answer for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Okay, so uh, classes will begin on the 19th. Um, thank you to everyone who have uh, uh, walked last week in the parade. I think it, it went really well. Uh, we had a couple of floats there between our float and the Lutherans for Life float. Uh, had the praise band playing and did a great job with that. Thank you guys for that. And to all those who helped decorate the float. Uh, but it seemed like we had twice as many floats there as a couple of years ago, and the crowd was just really good, uh, big. So thank you for all that. Uh, thank you for the things that were donated. It's greatly appreciated. Um, let's see here. Uh, the rest of the announcements I'm going to commend to your, your reading this morning um, as well. Um, just a quick note here. Uh, I'll... Uh, all parents with confirmation kids, again, we're starting this Wednesday, uh, September 1st. That's going to be at 4.30. And elders, we will be having our joint elders meeting uh, this Wednesday at 7 o'clock as well. Um, any announcement that I didn't make in the bulletin that should be announced? Not seeing any. Okay. God's richest blessings to each of you, and we will see you uh, perfectly next weekend. God's blessings.